Dan Galpin here at GDD Europe 2017 for the Developer Show with Claire Bailey. Now she's the Global Code Labs lead for Google Developer Relations. Tell us about these Code Labs. Well, Code Labs, uh, the thing you have to understand is that they are the mm -hmm. hands-on mm -hmm. learning component mm -hmm. for all of Google's content. Mm -hmm. So these labs were chosen to specifically accompany all of the sessions that are happening here at GDD. Mm -hmm. They're a great way for people on site to get inspired about something and then go try it out. And they're also a really good way for people at home or even after the conference to go and try something out for themselves because there's no way, better way to learn something than to actually do it. What's the most gratifying part about you know working on this whole code lab project? <sighs> Seeing people who come up at other events and tell me that they learned something from a code lab that mm. like they used. Or having people come up in an event and tell me they learned something that blew their mind. That's also really <laughs> gratifying. <laughs> and if you want to find out more about all the great code labs that we've had here, you can go to this fabulous URL and uh, try them all out for yourself. There's some amazing, amazing stuff to learn. Tell us about uh, you know, PWAs and what's going on with that. Okay, two things with PWAs. Uh, you know, I think we're getting these great new capabilities on the web. The combination of that with the reach of the web, the low friction for users, is really, really powerful. And with that, we're seeing these beautiful experiences, stuff like Twitter Lite, which is fantastic. Incredible sites, and you know, these really, really small install sizes. So where do you see the, the future of all this with the mobile web? Ah, well, okay, some favorites of mine. I love the stuff that's to do with media and images. So we've got uh, a bunch of really great media APIs coming to the web, and then stuff like image capture, you know, for taking photographs, controlling camera hard drive. It's like that tight integration with the platform, the device, the operating system. I love it. I'm here with Sarah Robinson, and Sarah is a developer advocate who works with big data and machine learning on Google Cloud Platform. What is your favorite of the pre-trained APIs? My favorite would have to be the Video Intelligence API, which is actually our newest of the machine learning APIs. And what you can do with that is you pass it a video, and it gives you granular data on what's happening in each scene of your video. Along with that, at a high level, it tells you what the video is about. We did a search of 10,000 jobs for senior and intermediate level developers and analyzed them to figure out all the core skills that the market's looking for. And there were some surprises in there. What are the kinds of skills that, that uh, you get? Give me some examples of the kinds of skills you would learn in order to get the certification. So a lot of developers tend to ignore accessibility, but it turned out to be very important. Uh, a lot of fundamental skills actually are in there too because most of the hiring managers these days are saying, well, I want you to work without jQuery or other supporting libraries. And so developers really had to build a strong foundation to do that. But we do go all the way up into progressive web apps. I hear that there are some scholarships that students can get um, here in Europe. Tell me a little bit more about that. So Udacity has released 60,000 scholarships for Europe, 30,000 for Android, 30,000 for web. And the best way to get that is to go to our website and look at the certification page, and we'll have the link and the details there. People imagine that tech and public policy are kind of separate, and public policy doesn't really necessarily influence uh, technology. But policymakers are thinking about this all the time. So we wanted to let them know about, for example, um, the evolution of the Internet of Things uh, in that space, and also about Android fragmentation and how policymakers are thinking about that around the world. Tell me about the, the policy issues that are going around the Internet of Things. I mean, I don't even feel like there is any policy around it these days. <laughs> well, it's one of those spaces that is uh, really quickly evolving. And this is uh, particularly a good place for de developers to engage because the, the space moves so fast that we don't think that law will be telling developers what they should do, but that developers are going to be setting the norms that um, policymakers will follow. And then what can we do for security generally? How do we think about security and what should be put in place for the plethora of IoT devices that we don't even know where they're going to go yet? Mm -hmm. and, and how do we think about security if, if there are so many different diverse devices that are out there?